If you live in eastern Alaska, southern Yukon, or far northern British Columbia, this image might look familiar to you. Across wide swaths of land is a discernible white patch of ground which forms a layer that is anywhere between less than a centimeter to several meters thick. While this may appear to be a sedimentary rock layer, it is in fact the products of one of Alaska's most explosive volcanic eruptions since the end of the last ice age, being known as the White River Ash due to its color. This ash was deposited over two VEI-6 explosive eruptions which were so large that they caused several indigenous societies to either temporarily or permanently abandon the region. Here is the map of where the latter of the two eruptions produced a layer of ash that still remains uniformly in the landscape, whether on the surface or as a layer just below the surface. This eruption occurred in 847 CE when an unusually powerful explosive eruption occurred from the tallest volcano in Alaska. As Mount Churchill erupted, it generated a more than 20 km planian eruption column on top of the already 15,636 foot tall volcano. Although this eruption generated massive lahars and lengthy pyroclastic flows, its most notable effects were the wide distribution of ash it scattered across large swaths of North America. Over the next several days, ash that was up to several dozens of feet thick fell across much of Alaska, Yukon, and British Columbia. This eruption was 38 times larger than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. However, a recent publication has thrown into question whether the map shown here still represents the true extent of ashfall. Supporting this paper is the fact that the ash from the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens left a minimum of a trace of ash over 1.3 million square kilometers of land, an eruption which rejected 1.3 cubic kilometers of material. Yet, the 847 CE eruption of Mount Churchill ejected an estimated 50 cubic kilometers of material, but current estimates only map the fallout distribution over an area of 560,000 square kilometers. The reason for this is the aforementioned area does not truly represent where the full extent of ash fell. Rather, it represents where ash thick enough to leave a notable layer of material in the ground fell after erosion from wind and water. Just like when one of my viewers in the United Kingdom reported that particles of ash fell on their car during an eruption of La Palma in the Canary Islands, the extent of the fallout is much more significant. Instead, according to a paper by Jensen B. and others, a layer of ash from this ultra Plinian eruption fell on almost the entirety of Canada, including Nunavut and Prince Edward Island. Additionally, ash also fell in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, the state of Maine, and almost the entirety of Greenland, Iceland, Ireland, and the United Kingdom, while also falling on parts of France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. The area which received ashfall was thus truly massive, covering an area of 26.5 million square kilometers. This figure, while largely representing areas which receive no more than a trace or just a few fine particles of material, seems more in line with ash distributions from other similarly large magnitude eruptions, such as Campi Flegri's two caldera forming eruptions, the latest caldera forming eruption of Santorini, and the caldera forming eruption that created the Locker Sea. To travel across such vast distances, an eruption plume which reached a height of at least 40 kilometers or 130,000 feet into the atmosphere was likely required. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Robert Harrison for supporting this channel.